Thank you for tuning in to another week, another episode of Outside the Box. I'm your host, Oneida the CEO, and tonight I have a segment where we're going to be discussing the elephant in the room, and we're going to talk about an amazing brand that you all need to be hip to. So I need you guys to buckle up your seatbelts because you're now plugged in, tuned in, tapped in to Outside the Box. I'm excited to introduce our next guest. He has a clothing line that is creating a statement because there's a message behind it. So without further ado, I want you guys to give it up for 713 Hebrew. Hey. hey how you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you for coming on Outside the Box. My pleasure to be here. So I've had the opportunity to meet you and get to become affiliated with you. But for those that are listening and watching, can you tell us who you are, what do you do, and what we're going to be talking about on today? Well, I go by 713 Hebrew, um, a messenger with a great message. And that's um, through my clothing line, Black Jew. And that's revealing the true identity of today's Negroes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, we've been told that we're quote unquote African Americans. Okay, right. Well, you know, that's a term that was given to us in the mid 80s, you know. Mm -hmm. But the question is, is what were Negroes doing before slavery? Right. And that's what our people got to get back to. Mm -hmm. So that's what black Jew represents. It's like a beacon mm -hmm. because we are the children of Israel. All right. And we got to, again, the elephant in the room has to get addressed. <laughs> Man. And, you know, those are the tough conversations that people don't want to have because for so long we've just been brought up, you know, no pun against any type of religion, but we've been brought up on Christianity. And Absolutely. there's so many contradictions into who we really are when you get to get to the meat of it and you start researching the different books that were taken out of the biblical content. Absolutely. So... Yeah, it's a touch. It's a touchy conversation, but one I'm definitely geared up for. Mm -hmm. Now you have uh, your clothing line. When did that start for you? It started for me about two years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I was actually heading to D.C. to go visit one of my good friends of mine, and I was just sitting on the couch and I was thinking, hmm, what can I press up to piss off some white people today? <laughs> and, well, I go in this airport, yeah. you know, so. Black Jew just came, when I tell you, it just came to me, it came to me just like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had wore it, got out there to D.C., and when I tell you, I got so many stares. Yeah. It's like people wanted to come and approach me and be like, hey, what, what the hell are you wearing? Yeah. You know, people that look like me was like, man, what is that? And then yeah. people that didn't look like me were like, whoa, yeah. man, it can, it can be offensive, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's our true identity. It's yeah. our true identity as a people, you know? Right, right. Okay, so... We, we talked a little bit about the enlightenment and what inspired you behind the brand. But what was that aha moment when you knew it was time? Like you said, you went out mm -hmm. and you knew you wanted to piss some folks off. Mm -hmm. But where were you in life? Like what triggered that? Well, before the brand came into play, um, I was doing 60 second videos on my Instagram. So that's, that's kind of how I made my name. Mm -hmm. And um, we're still teaching out the Bible, mm -hmm. but not from a, Christian mindset because mm -hmm. you, you got to think about it. It's it's a difficult path telling Negroes that Christianity. We our people didn't our people knew nothing about, about that, that before yeah. we got on those boats to come over here in sixteen nineteen. Mm -hmm. We know white Jesus. Oh, no, those are things that were taught to us by our oppressors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so we have a lot of reprogramming we have to do, right. and that's so difficult because we, we're so deeply rooted into these European customs that we have today. And you know, so many people get shunned for having different belief systems, you know. Absolutely. I'm, I don't consider myself a Christian. You know, I'm more spiritual than religious because I, I believe that religion creates division. Yes, and I, I also feel like religion was uh, the first way to d divide the people. And the reason why is because it's man-made. Right. That's why. Right, right. You know, it's man-made. So, um, and, that, and that's a tough pill to swallow for many because mm -hmm. that's a lot. Of, I grew up in the church. Easter, yeah. Easter suits on Sunday. Got to yeah. go through with the speeches. You know, <laughs> I was in church like four that's times a week when I was spending my summers with Granny. You going in the church at seven and coming out till four. Man, what? And don't forget prayer on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Fellowship, all that. You know, so yeah, that's all our people know. Mm -hmm. So to be that that oddball to come back and 
be like, hey, you know, come find out what your true identity is. And that and it's in the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Now, before um, you wanted to use your platform to enlighten others, what was life like for you when you went through that transition? It was lonely. Mm-hmm. It was lonely because my uncle was the one that introduced me to it. And he just said, hey, I'm not trying to convince you, but just go back and read the Bible. But this time, go read it as an Israelite. Don't go read it as a Christian. Mm-hmm. So then when I finally went back to research, you, you notice that Israel is written in the scriptures like over 2,000 times. Mm-hmm. And then once you really get to the meat of it, because we all believe in Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we go to Revelation 1, it tells us what he actually looks like. I'm like, hmm. That blonde eye, yeah, you know, no, 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 the blonde hair, blue eye, that's not really what it says there. Mm-hmm. And if you go to the book of Hebrews, it says that his true nationality, he was a Jew mm-hmm. from the tribe of Judah. Mm-hmm. So that's what, so black, so I can explain black Jew in so many different ways, but black Jew is Christ. Right, right. It's right. So, you know, it was a lonely road for me because once my uncle explained that to me, Okay, now I had to start doing away with a lot of things. Like, I don't Man. celebrate holidays anymore. The reprogramming anymore. in that was... It's, it's like in the Matrix when you take the pill, right? Yeah. You know, it's... It, so, at the beginning, it was lonely. But, you know, once once people see, you know, the, the good fruits that you possess, I had to put away pork. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, no crawfish, shrimp. A lot of the biblical laws... That were given to only yeah, us. Yeah, you know, shrimp is like the pork of the sea, but I, I can't give it. Try to tell the Houstonian they can't eat crawfish. Wait, what? Come on now. <laughs> He's sucking their head and everything. They probably eating it right now. <laughs> you know, so, and we will, and, we, and I, I used to be there too. Yeah. I used to be yeah. there too. So it's just having that compassion with our people. People, yeah. Yeah. And patience too, because not everybody is going to understand Absolutely. your walk and where you are, your journey. Now, when you start to create, you know, walk in your understanding and calling and decide to be a bright light in a dark room and be a voice for people like ourselves who may not be as educated. When you started educating people, Mm -hmm. how did your family and those, your loved ones receive it? Were they open to it or how, how was that? It wasn't until they saw the impact I was having Mm -hmm. to where they were like, wow, okay, maybe I'm on to something. Yeah. Maybe, you know, okay. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, Maybe it's worth going to investigate a little bit more. And that's all I'm trying to do. I just want to just pique your interest a little bit. Just go back and, and read the scriptures. But not so much, you know, not to bash the church because we all used to be there. Uh, yeah. And I always tell people the Bible still is the basic instructions before leaving earth. Absolutely. So there's still some good things in there that you can find that will help you be a better version of yourself in it. But you have to expand your mind and you have to realize, you know, they always say, well, you get judged for your sins. Mm -hmm. That's how you get determined whether you go to heaven or hell. But Mm -hmm. then they say, well, Jesus died for your sins. So if he already died for my sins, why am I being judged by them? Okay. Now, when it comes with, okay, he did die Mm -hmm. for our sins. But if you look at it from a christianity standpoint it's like it gives them it, it gives those a free license to sin mm-hmm. that's not why he died for right. us that, that's that's not that's 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 not the reason we're still supposed to be obedient to obtain eternal life we must keep the commandments that's mm-hmm. the whole duty of man to fear the most high and keep the commandments now what if i told you my belief is not necessarily that he volunteered to die for our sins i feel like that was in that day and time mm-hmm. that was how they were assassinated, just like Martin Luther King had a message, just like Malcolm X had a message. Anything that was enlightening the people, freeing the people, opening up our mindset, we beca- we become a threat at that point. Absolutely. So the 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 scripture may read that he voluntarily got up there, but I don't. That does not resonate with me. That he voluntarily. Now he probably mm-hmm. didn't fight. I mean, he got beat. I mean. He, right. I mean, it it is what it is. I believe he died for what he believed in. And the the story that they gave us was mm-hmm. to worship him. But even in the Bible it says that, you know, God don't like 
idolizing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we really not supposed to walk around here and wear crosses. Absolutely. And, and pray to statues and those all are of those graven, graven images. Those graven images? No, we're not supposed so, to. That's idolatry. Right. So the things that, that they're teaching us is okay is actually contradictions within itself. Right. You know. And see, what? okay, so when. Who this okay. is a tough conversation, ain't it? It is. <laughs> It was prophecy that he had to die, right? It, you know, so so th- that so it had to happen, mm-hmm. just like with everything that's going on today with, with the pandemic and all that. All 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 these. Oh, it was prophesied. It's all prophesied. It's in the scriptures. You can go back and read it in books. Like he said, these things are, are supposed to happen. Actually, these these are going to be the beginning mm-hmm. of sorrow times, right? Mm-hmm. So no, we're not supposed to be wearing the crosses, things like that. But without, you know, our people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge, and. We're just going based off of what our parents taught us growing up, Mm -hmm. which actually made the role lonely for me because it's like I was going against the grain on everything that that was taught to me growing up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's the part of growing up. Now, when you decided to get out and spread your message, did you have a support team? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, In the Israelite community, and it's a very large community, I have tons tons of support. Absolutely, absolutely. Um. It's, it's set apart because, again, you know, we don't do what everyone else does. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we try and attempt to live according to the scriptures, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. So we have a certain diet that we go by. We have a certain attire that we, um, that we wear. Um, holidays, no. Holy days, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so we start talking about the Passover and things like that are actually mentioned in the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Why, is that not, why is that not pushed in today's society? Right. You know, so. But they, but they talk about Christmas. And, See, they talk about Christmas, but and they idolize Santa Claus. <laughs> and ain't got damn thing to do. Do it, Easter. We got a bunny rabbit for that. And, and we laugh. We laugh at it because it's and almost Easter don't comical. Even lay eggs. It's crazy, yeah. but yeah. we laugh at it. But that's idolatry. That yeah. just keeps us lost as a people. Mm-hmm. Where is our religion? Mm-hmm. Where is our traditions? Mm-hmm. We, we have them. If we we have them, but it's in the Bible. But you know what they say: if you want to hide it from them, put, put it in a book. book. Yeah. Just put in a book. True talk, true talk. Now, um, you say you have a big support team in your Israelite community. Yes. What about those that may not be as educated? Are you receiving, um, like, are people reaching out to you for oh, the enlightenment? Yeah. Daily. And how does that make you feel? Like I'm fulfilling a purpose. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like I'm doing his work. Mm-hmm. Like it's that appreciation because. At some point in time, the Negro mind is going to have to be like, okay, this doesn't seem right. Why do, why do all these George Floyd situations continue to happen to our people? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we're cursed. We, we are a cursed people. Does anyone else have a reason why this is happening? We've been marching for years. Right. Why do we continue to be at the bottom as a people? And why do we stay divided? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to segue um, – into Black Jew Academy. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Okay, so I started Black Jew fresh out of my living room. Single dad. No, that's the clothing line. This is the clothing line. Okay. This is the clothing line. Single dad, working nine to five. And I say that to segue into the Black Jew Academy because there's no excuse. Right. There's no excuse to be great. There's no excuse. If you want to start your clothing brand, Black Jew Academy is a great start because it – it's, it, it gives you all the mistakes that I made mm-hmm. when I didn't have a mentor. Mm-hmm. I'm able to make sure that those that come under me with the academy can avoid those same mistakes and those stumbling blocks. Okay. You know, so um, and everyone wants to start it on. So you're teach teaching that. others how to be successful at creating their own clothing line. That's black excellence. I like that. Paying it forward. I mean... Fire your boss. I mean, it's nothing wrong with having a nine to five. I'm yeah. trying to get off of mine. Yeah. Are we all? <laughs> I'm trying to get off of mine. Are we all? Now, um, I don't know what to say. Now, is is it is able it's great to be able to manifest. Okay. And to be able to see your vision come into fruition. Yes. So what do you see in the future for Black Jew? It's, it's, it's continuing to spread to the four corners, mm-hmm. and what I what I love most about it is not those that understand it because they, they get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like going towards those individuals who don't know. Mm-hmm. 
So when I'm starting, and now I'm starting to send it to like celebrities, athletes, actresses, actors, not- notable people. It's like, okay, wow, they really getting it. And a lot of the, and a lot of these artists I grew up listening to as a little boy, you know. So yeah. when I was able to send it to like Bone Thugs and Harmony, I'm like, wow, I used to listen to these dudes with a, with a, with a Walkman on going to middle school. Yeah. You know, so and I was able to send something to Rick Ross, one of my favorite artists to listen to now. So it's rewarding. Mm-hmm. It's very rewarding. I can say that. That's All praise awesome. to the Most High. Ah, oh, man. Yes, indeed. I'm proud of you. Thank you so much. And just for being a bright light in a dark room and stepping outside the box. Yes. You know, so many times we are afraid to step outside the box that social stigma places on us. And standing in our truth and using our voice to do that can be a scary thing. And sometimes the backlash makes us feel like we're not supported, but... I support the movement. I'm, Absolutely. Hey, make sure you I get your black it. juice shirts. Hey. Speaking of that, you guys have merch and everything. And if we want to stay into uh, contact with you, your Instagram page is at 713 at Hebrew, Hebrew, where they can go there and see. Uh, do you have a a link there? For, yes, you do. You have a link there where they can either go there to shop, yep. and you also have a website. But you have a web uh, link for Black Jew Academy as well. Absolutely. So if you guys are out there and you're looking to start your own brand and you don't know where to start, be sure to follow Black Jew Academy. He will help you with your dreams it's, and bring it, that it's to It's not difficult. It's not difficult. The startup is, is rather easy. It's just, as anything, you just want to have a mentor. Yeah. You have and a not mentor. only that, he has some fly gear. Some merch for both women and men. So make sure that you go to his website, which is blkjew.shop. Blackjew.shop? Yeah. And you it's can, global, too. Global. Yeah. It's big in the U.K. I love it. Big I in the love U.K. It. The merch is thrown. I like that. Yes, mm. indeed. And I want to remind our viewers and our watchers that we are on multiple platforms. You can find us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Hip Hop Streets Live Stream, Music App, A Star TV, iHeart Radio, you name it. Any streaming platform that you may see here on the screen, we're on 28. Find one that works for you. Like us, subscribe to us, tell a friend to tell a friend to check out Outside the Box where we are dropping dope content every week and i want to thank you black jew for coming on the show and sharing your story now i do want to ask you if it was something that you could do differently okay what would it have been i wish my uncle would have told me that i was a king long time ago yeah yeah so i'm glad but you know everything has its purpose Mm -hmm. and everyone wakes up when they need to Mm -hmm. so as long as he gives me breath that's my mission to tell our people that we are the children of israel yes we are And I want to thank you guys for tuning in, for staying plugged in, tuned in, tapped in. This segment was powered by Black Jew. I'm your host, Oneta CEO, and you are Outside the Box.